Save, a show where me and he talk about our list of movie blind spots, movies that we haven't seen or one of the bo- one or the both of us have not seen, but we are watching them now and discussing them for the first time. We have no idea what each other thinks of the movie until we start filming. And then we're like, what? Yeah, pretty okay. much. That's <laughs> so, your reaction to me saying I'm, anything. I'm Andy. And I'm Adam. And this week we're doing a couple of movies. Uh, the this one at least I, I have never oh. see, I had never seen before. I've seen the one that we're going to talk about on Wednesday, but it's been a long time. That. So we'll see what I think about that when we get to it. But Adam's going to tell us about the movie that I have not seen until now. That's right. That we're going to talk about today. Multi-millionaire Tom Mullen's son is kidnapped and held ransom. Kate, Kate, who are you calling? He said no police. Why he said he'd kill him if you call the police. I can have the money inside Why three hours. Why did you leave him? Some... Why did you leave him? I didn't. I saw you. You walked away. <sighs> All right. All right, I'm calling the police. Call the FBI. For Christ's sake, just let me pay this. No, please call the FBI. Kate, the FBI just spent three months trying to bury us. Do you think they give a good goddamn about you or me or... Tom, they know us. Uh, Ransom came out in 1996. It is directed by Ron Howard. It is written by uh, Richard Price and Alexander, e- I want to say Egon, Ignon. Uh, and it's based off of a, uh, like a 1954 kind of um, episode of State Street. So the writer, the, the other writers that are credited with the story are Cyril Hume and Richard Milebaum. So those all all four of those people are credited for writing because it's kind of based on prior work. Um, Ron Howard, uh, you probably know who he is, but in case you don't, he was uh, very popular in that uh, Fonzie TV show, Happy Days. Happy Days, Andy Griffith show. Andy Griffith show. Uh, he's a director. He's directed a lot of things: uh, Splash, Apollo thirteen, A Beautiful Mind, uh, Solo, a Star Wars movie. Uh, he's all over Solo, the Willow. Willow, Da Vinci Code, which we did for the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's directed a bunch of things. Um, I feel like everyone knows about Ransom, but maybe that's incorrect. I don't know why. Uh, Ma- Ransom stars uh, Mel Gibson as Tom Mullen, Renee Russo as Kate Mullen, uh, Brawley Nolte uh, as Sean Mullen. I wonder if he's related to Nick Nolte. That's his kid. Okay, they're Nick Nolte's kid is, as Sean Mullen. One Gary Sneese as Detective Jimmy Shaka. Delroy Lindo, love seeing him in the movies as Agent Lonnie Hawkins. Lil Taylor, L- Lily Taylor. Lily. <laughs> Lil, 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 Lil Bow Wow. Taylor, Lil, Taylor Lil Bow Wow is. As a, uh, uh, I can't even read that. Ma- Maris? Maris Connor, Connor Liv Schreider, and Donnie Wahlberg. Uh, so this is a movie I've seen oh, probably half a dozen times. Whoa. Yeah, I it just feel like it's one of those movies I was always on when I was growing yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, I get it. And I feel like I watched it I like that. last year, the year before. Which probably wasn't a good idea to put pair this so soon to that, but them's the break sometimes. I said that last episode too. Uh, them's the breaks, uh, but it's not my week, so I don't get to start with how I feel about it. I got to toss it over to this guy and ask him, "Did you? What'd you know about Ransom? Why'd you skip Ransom? And what'd you think about Ransom?" Yeah, I remember this movie coming out in 1996, and I saw the preview so many times <laughs> yeah. for this movie, and I heard Mel Gibson utter the line, Give me back my son! So many times, it just turned me off. I was like, I don't even want to see that. It was, it was like seeing the trailer for Dunkirk a thousand or, times and hearing him go, You should be at home! Or uh, taken. Over over. Yeah. I have certain just, skills. I, I got so sick of hearing it that eventually, by the time it came out, I was like, I don't even care. Yeah. about seeing it so i once again i had i definitely had friends that went and saw it and they enjoyed it and they were like oh you should you know you shouldn't be such a snob you should go see it but i was like screw you and i punched <laughs> them in the face and they were not my friend that is the appropriate response to anyone that wants you so, to see it i uh yeah so I, n- I never got around to watching it but i mean i was i was pretty familiar with you know i knew ron howard directed it yeah. and I, I knew mel gibson and renee russo and and delroy lindo were in it just from seeing them in the in the preview but yeah never got around to watching it until now and I think Ron Howard is one of those guys that he's a fairly solid director. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't, unlike somebody like Brian De Palma, who we talked about last week, he does not have, I feel like, a lot of director trademarks that he does. Maybe he does, but 
they're not noticeable to me. Like yeah. Brian De Palma is like very in your face, like using the split diopter and using the Dutch angles and using the split screen and all these different things that he does. I don't feel like Ron Howard does that. He's not a showy yeah. kind of guy. They call him, they call Ron Howard a journeyman director. Yeah. And, and I think that's a, appropriate. He does a solid job. I feel like with most of the movie, I'm not, I'm, I mean, I'm, there's definitely movies that he's done that I don't like, yeah. but I feel like he's done a lot of stuff that I do like, you know, like a beautiful mind or, Apollo 13 or, or stuff like that, you know, so I feel like he's a solid director, you know, so going into this, I'm thinking, okay, it's going to be, you know, again, I'm not going to be like, oh, this is definitely a Ron Howard movie, you know, I'm just going to kind of watch the story. And I like the fact that I feel like it gets going pretty quickly with the kidnapping of his son. They, they, they have the little party to kind of set up. Here's who Mel Gibson is. Yeah. He's a guy who's a self-made millionaire. He's created this airline. He might have been involved in some controversy, yep. some payouts, so you know that he's not squeaky clean. Yep. You get who his wife is, the Rene Russo character, his little kid, Brawley Nolte, and then they go to the science fair or whatever, and that's where he gets abducted. Oh, they're on the park. Yeah, yeah. The, well, but they're doing some kind of science yeah, yeah, competition yeah, yeah, yeah. or some crap, right? Yeah, there. that stupid so, drone thing. Yeah, and so the kid gets abducted, and from that point on, the movie is basically like the kidnappers calling him and talking with the, you know, the... Are you voice disguiser to, are thing, you yeah. To go? Give me two million dollars. I'll take a Big Mac with fries. Um, the, you know, kind of uh, a lot of the rest of the way. And I felt like that, the fact that it kind of got into it fairly quickly, you didn't have like 30 minute build up before they get into the kidnapping, is cool. And I felt like you had enough knowledge of who Mel Gibson's character was. You know that he doesn't always play by the rules because he, he does admit to Delroy Lindo that, in fact, he did bribe the guy, you yeah. know, whatever, because you don't know that necessarily at first. So I, I liked all that aspect of it. But the biggest thing uh, that I had a problem with with this movie is it just goes on <laughs> and on and on and on. And by the time... So they know that they're dealing with a professional, because Delroy Lindo tells him, you know, keep him on the phone, ask him what the weather's like, ask him, you know, all these specific questions. And since Gary Sinise, again, obviously we spoil things, yeah. Gary Sinise is behind it all. He's the mastermind and he is a police officer. He, he knows, knows the, the techniques. He knows what they're going to do. And so they know to look for somebody because they're, they're like cross check with people that have a, a law enforcement background or, and all this other stuff. But then when Gary Sinise finally turns on the other guys and it's like, oh no, I found the kid. They don't really scrutinize Gary Sinise's character. Yeah. They yeah. don't. They, I mean, they interview him in the hospital bed, no, but yeah. she would think that, cause I thought what was going to happen was Delroy or, or was, uh, sorry, Gary Sinise's character and the kid are both going to be taken to the same hospital. So they're all going to be in the same kind of proximity. I realized they're not going to find out who Gary Sinise is as they're like taking him to the ambulance. I didn't think that, but I thought they were all going to go to the hospital. And I thought as they're interviewing him, Delroy Lindo was going to be smart enough to kind of catch on to certain things that he might say yeah. or something like that. And then it was going to kind of play out there in the hospital. But no, we get another like half hour of Gary Sinise you know, limping to, well, not limping because he's only got a broken arm, but walking very slowly, you know, coming to, gingerly. coming to, gingerly coming to Mel Gibson's apartment to get the ransom or not the ransom, the, the, the reward money yeah. that he was promised. That scene goes on forever. Then they go to the bank that goes on forever. Then there's like a chase through the streets where they're like duking it out. Then there's some slow-mo involved. <laughs> just to pad things even there's further. There's a lot of slow-mo in this movie. So yeah. So by, by the time the movie ended, I honestly didn't like it all that much because I just, it, I, 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 it hooked Overwrought. me. It, yes, very much so. I, it's a perfect word. I think that it hooked me initially and I was excited to see what do they do with the ransom thing, but it just way overstays its welcome. Yeah. It just goes on and on and on and on. I also think it's a good thing that Brawley Nolte never really went on, on to, to an acting career because he sucks. Yeah. I don't think he's, and he doesn't even do much. As the kid, but maybe they limited him because he's not very good. Anytime he has lines, he's not very good. Uh, but I think everybody else is fine. I mean, I didn't really have a problem with any no. of the other acting. And as you said, Delroy Lindo kind of elevates every movie that he's in. So I like seeing him. But overall, this movie, whew, it, I'll say it's watchable. But yeah. man, you're in for a long haul, in my opinion. Uh, and this is not a movie that I plan on revisiting. Yep. So you said you've seen it. You felt like it was on TV all the time and yes. you liked it or back then. I did, or, yes. You know, yeah. So has that kinda, changed at all? Yeah, yeah. I think I, I think I kind of was pretty blatant about where I fell in this movie. Yeah. I, 
yeah, I remember liking this movie, but this time I think it's just been a roller coaster. The last time, the I feel like this time around, I'm just kind of like, just all of it just feels not interesting to me, and it was really yeah. not that enjoyable for me to watch this time around. Yeah, I, and I, I just think I, I think I've seen it too many times. Um, I do think like some of it's interesting, and I think it's worth seeing if you've never seen it. But I do agree with your with your issues with it. I think you're smarter than the movie because I never put those two together. But I think that would have made for a what you're saying where, where we find out that Gary Sinise and Delroy Lindo finally puts it all together. I think that's more intelligent than they thought about getting the movie together. Well, it just and I would have wrap preferred things up that. Quicker, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, because we kind of get it with the kid like hearing Gary Sinise in the room, and then it's like, oh no, like. You're so realizing. they could do something as simple as they're in the same hospital and they're like, we're going to take you to say thank you to the guy yeah. that, and he likes, you know, he hears him and then, then it all this plays out right there yeah. in the hotel room. Yeah. I don't know. Something. So, uh, yeah. So this time around just was, it was just, I was going, th- I was just waiting for the movie to end. Uh, well, well, so was I. <laughs> and, and yeah. This is the first time I've yeah. seen it, but I was like, let's go guys. Come on. I do think like, were you, when Gary Sinise enters the house and they play it like he might be a, under uncovering this plot did that did were you did you think were you like oh no this is gonna happen or were you like no but i'm not saying that i'm so intelligent that i figured it out this may have been that may have been something that was spoiled for me a long time ago because i i kind of thought he was in on it from the beginning but i don't think it's because i'm like smart i think somebody probably spoiled it for me a long time ago yeah and i just remembered it but yeah i didn't it didn't surprise me when he was like hey i'm one of you i was like yeah. yeah okay yeah, uh, I think that I think that that carries the movie a little bit if you get surprised by that. Yeah, I, I think it's competently made. You know, it's like sure, you said yeah. with John Ron yeah. Howard. It's just it's not. There's nothing great or amazing or interesting about the movie. It's just like a by the book kind of thriller, and it's okay. Yeah, you know, so is where I fall in it. So not not. I, and I didn't put this on here to rag on it. I thought I was. I thought I liked this movie. Better. Well, yeah, I I thought I was gonna like Casualties of War yeah. this, this time around. So I I actually put it on there hoping that we would both like it. Yeah, I, but I didn't. No, both of us are down on ransom. Uh, I will say that Renee Russo, Mel Gibson. If you like them as a couple, husband and wife in this movie, go to the Lethal Weapon movies. <laughs> they were both a husband and wife in the latter two of those movies, and. Uh, the only other piece of trivia that I pulled that was kind of interesting was that, and don't read my notes because I'm going to ask you a question, is uh, in the prior year, both Ron Howard and Mel Gibson were competing for Academy Award for Best Picture. What were the two movies that were competing against each other? It's the year of 1995. Uh, that would be Braveheart and Apollo 13. Yes, that's correct. And uh, do we know who won? I don't think either one won. I don't have it in my notes. Braveheart won Best Picture. Okay, year. there we go. Yeah. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah. But that's kind of uh, anything else you'd like to add about the movie Ransom? Well, I think we both, and it's not about Ransom, but I think we both agree if you're going to watch a 90s movie with Rene Russo, it's got to be Thomas Crown Affair. Oh, yeah, that right? movie's awesome. <laughs> but no, I, I the only other thing, I mean, I have the, the critics, how they weigh in on Ransom, 75% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes, 62%. Whoa. It's high. <laughs> it is high. 62% audience. It did get two thumbs up, and Leonard Malton gives it three stars. See, we're the minority now. Yeah. Maybe it doesn't hold up as well. Yeah, I, I feel like it doesn't. I mean, I feel like maybe if I would have seen this in the 90s, I, I probably would have liked it more, maybe. Yeah. I, I don't know. But now that I'm older and maybe more discerning or just crankier yeah. or something like that, I, I didn't I didn't care for it that much. And the, the part where he he kind of turns it, turns it from being a ransom to, no, this is now a price on your head. Again, maybe that's something that I just I saw like on TV or I or somebody told me about yeah. it, but th- because that didn't really shock me. I don't think it's meant to be shocking necessarily, but I think it's meant to have more of an impact than it actually had on me. Yeah. Because I was like, well, now that your kid's just gonna die, like, <laughs> I, you know, which is exactly what his wife thinks. She's yeah. like, well, now you've killed our son, and I was like, yeah, I agree with her. So, <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> but yeah. All right. Well, uh, on that's it uh, on these Monday episodes. We always like to talk about what we've been watching, so I'm going to toss it over to you. Yes. Watch anything interesting? I did. So last week I mentioned I watched some horror movies. This was like a trilogy, the woman trilogy. I didn't watch any trilogies, but I watched some horror movies that are all directed by the same guy. Okay. And this guy's name is Ty West. Oh, I've heard of Ty West. So he has come out with a movie called X. He didn't do uh, Something of the Devil? He did. He did The House of the Devil, yeah. Okay. 
All right, so, but we're talking about X yeah, now. Yeah, X came out, I think, this year, yep. and I got around to watching it. I've heard it's good. It's kind of a Valentine to Grindhouse, 70s yep. movies, you know, Texas Chainsaw Massacre and, and Which movies like you that. you love the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I love Chainsaw. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. One year, is that your favorite? Halloween's your favorite horror movie or is Texas Chainsaw Massacre your favorite I, horror movie? I, I mean, it's close, but I think Halloween edges it out. Okay. But Texas Chainsaw Massacre is definitely up there. They're both in my top ten, for gotcha. sure, okay. of horror movies of all time. But they're, they're fantastic. But... Uh, so X is kind of a love letter, Ty West's love letter to kind of this, those kind of grindhouse, you know, l- maybe lower budget kind of horror films or whatever. And I'll say that I liked it. I oh, thought X is that's awesome. good. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it a, a great deal. Well, I feel like there's a bunch of them coming out apparently, a bunch of sequels and prequels. Yeah, yeah. I heard, I heard, <laughs> I heard. There's they've already got like a prequel coming out. But uh, yeah, I liked it overall, and I enjoyed seeing because not only does it pay tribute to Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but it definitely pays tribute to some other famous horror mm-hmm. films. And I'm not going to say what those are because I don't want we're not reviewing the movie, so I don't want to spoil it. But be on the lookout for, you know, kind of like, oh, I'm, I'm sure he's making kind of a nod to this kind of film. I think some of them are fairly obvious. Uh, there's a few that maybe are not so obvious. I mean, there's some that are like on the nose. Yeah. But there's some I feel like that are maybe not as obvious. But I think overall it's a very effective movie. Uh, the soundtrack is not anachronistic. Oh, so the, that's the, a big the songs, plus in your book. That is a big plus. The songs actually did come out when the movie takes place. They're, it's or not like he plays a song. Too. Yeah, it's, it's not like he plays a song that came out. Because the movie takes place in 79. It's not like he plays a song from the 80s or anything like that. So he did a quick five-minute Google search and figured <laughs> out, which is very easy to do, and I don't understand why not, more people don't do that. Not you, Fear Street, or... Uh, Plenty or of movies. Stranger Things. Plenty of movies. <laughs> Plenty of movies, TV shows, yeah, that, that are like... It takes like 30 seconds to Google, when did this song come out? But people don't do it, or they don't care, and I care. But anyway, I, I thought it was good um, overall. It's it's nice, and it's got some good gore, you know, some funny scenes, oh, cool. uh, but... But that made me want to go back and watch more Ty West movies. And I've seen The House of the Devil. And House of the Devil, I, I like that as well. Okay. I mean, it's been a long time since I've seen it. And it's very much a slow burn. But that's also kind of a tribute to 80s horror films. Like oh, early 80s horror films. But I went back and watched The Sacrament. Okay. Which is essentially his kind of take on the Jim Jones, Guyana story. Uh, it's not it's not Jim Jones, but it's basically just another character that's like Jim Jones. Yep. That's kind of invited people to a remote country, you know, and to drink the Kool Aid, as they say, you know, that that sort of thing. Uh, I didn't really like the sacrament that much, honestly. Uh, it's well made and pretty well acted, but it just didn't do it for me. But the other Ty West movie that I watched is called The Innkeepers. Have you ever heard of that one? I don't think I have. I really liked it. Unfortunately, up until kind of the climax and the ending, I thought was fairly underwhelming. But up to the climax, I mean, ultimately, I liked the movie overall. But overall, because the you know the climax and the ending doesn't take up that much of the movie. But the rest of the movie, I was like fully on board with. It's a good kind of old fashioned ghost story kind of movie. Okay. It takes place in a hotel, which is supposedly haunted. It's got a very very small cast. But I think one thing that really, really does it for the for the movie is I feel like the the people that the, because it's basically the this hotel's last weekend they're closing for good and so there's hardly anybody staying in the hotel yeah. and a lot of the rooms have been stripped and the furniture's been taken out and stuff like that but the two people that are working the front desk are completely believable to me as like some some like college age kids. <laughs> Actually, one of them is kind of older, but but a college age kid who's just doing it to earn some extra money and hate their job <laughs> and are like bored or whatever, and so they have to deal with like things that go bump in the night. But I really enjoyed those characters, and the music score for the Innkeepers is fantastic. It's absolutely spot on for this kind of a movie. It sounds like Bernard Herman or somebody oh, yeah. like like a Hitchcock type of score, but it's. I don't remember the guy who did it, who the composer's name is, but the score is flat out perfect for this film. So I feel like that adds a lot to it. Unfortunately, the ending and stuff was like, uh, I wish they would have done a better job with it. But overall, the atmosphere and the music and the acting I thought was really, really good. So I would definitely recommend The Innkeepers. Not so much Sacrament and X that I thought was really good. All right, so those are all Ty West movies. All Ty West. Is that all of his filmography or does he have other stuff? I mean, you said House of Devil. I feel like he has one or two others, but I didn't I didn't. I feel like he's out. done like one of the VHSs or like that. He's done like He was some involved of those, with those, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah so done he, some segments from some of that stuff. Yeah, he, he has. 
Yes, yeah. And one of the guys, Joe Swanberg, he's, yes. he was involved with VHS. Yeah. He's an actor in The Sacrament. He's okay. one of the actors. Okay. So, all right. Uh, Were what those about on you? streaming? Do you remember? Sorry to... Toss that at you. No, maybe one of the three that yeah. I mentioned is streaming. I don't. Th- I'm pretty sure X is not. Yeah, at I least X it. is not streaming on anything that I uh, yeah. have. Um, I I had to watch it through other means. I believe it's <laughs> recent enough. It's not on streaming. <laughs> yeah, uh, although it might be on Draft House on demand. Maybe I don't uh, know. Maybe. Okay. What about you? All right. Again, I am. We're polar opposites in what we've been watching this week. I watched The Lost City, the Sandra Bullock Channing Tatum movie that looked terrible. But since I saw Romancing the Stone, I have a, which this movie borrows heavily from. <laughs> uh, I have. I like those kind of movies. And again, it's more action adventure kind of stuff, and it's in my wheelhouse. So I w- decided to watch it. Didn't have high expectations for this movie. Also. I will say the first quarter of the movie really surprised me. And I was like, oh, this movie is better than than it looked like it was going to be. Like, I was actually going to be like, this is pretty good. Uh, you know, that being not great, but like, uh, I get what this is and it's doing it well. Yeah. Kind of thing. And then uh, the movie loses some steam really fast. And about the time Sandra Bullock goes off a cliff, this movie also goes off a cliff. Uh-huh. And it just kind of loses a lot of the steam and it's just not as interesting. And I don't know why it loses that propulsion and all that kind of stuff. And and it, it and it kind of you know, just it's just it turns to be it just went from adequate to kind of good to mediocre at best kind of movie. It was really bad. Uh I, I you know I think um uh, uh, Dana Redcliffe does a pretty good job as the villain, kind of. He's interesting. Sandra Bullock does a good job as kind of this writer, Damsel in Stress. Shane Tatum, he's okay in the movie. I mean, he, he does what's well. He's kind of like annoying a little bit in the movie, which I think he's supposed to be. Yeah. But I think the movie, you know, you're, I don't, I'm, I'm, I don't think this is spoiling it, but. In the movie, Sandra Bullock sees Channing Tatum's character a certain way. And I think the whole movie is about her changing her perspective on him. And he wanting her to change her perspective on him. And she kind of does in the end, but you really don't... I, for me, I didn't follow that journey. Like, I was waiting for Channing Tatum to have a unique perspective on what's going on. And for that to be the point where she's like, Oh, wait, this guy is not how I had him pegged. He's completely different. And the movie really didn't do that to me. The movie really focused on Chan- on Sandra Bullock figuring everything out, and it's her thing. And she really, if Channing Tatum wasn't there, I think she could have figured it out herself, right? It could have been a solo thing. He didn't bring anything to the that I remember to the movie, or his character didn't bring anything to the movie that would have caused her to think outside the box or reevaluate the situation, and then you know ultimately win in the end, kind of thing. So I feel like th- maybe they were the writers were thinking of kind of going against that trope for me it just made the movie work out even less because you know like think of like romancing the stone like you know um well, i can't even think of the character's name uh uh but you know like he yeah it just i just think it works better for these kind of like rom-com action adventure movies if they kind of work along that formula so i will say probably it's a skip unless you really 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 want to see this movie or want to see Something like the Romancing Stone, I, you know, Romancing Stone, great movie, does it hundred times better than this movie. But I will say that uh, Lost City was kind of started out okay, but then just kind of no, turned out not great. Is Brad Pitt good in it? Yes, Brad Pitt is good. He's interesting uh, in the movie. So uh, I th- I think he was uh, I think he added a whole lot. His characters, yeah, his characters kind of. Su- Perfless a little bit. Uh, I don't, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, I'm not happy with the way his character kind of integrates with the whole thing. And I know what they're trying to do with it. And I don't want to talk about it too much because it's definitely a spoiler. But for me, I think they could have, I, th- I would have thought about that differently. Because if, uh, this is, this is going to be a long thing that might be a spoiler. If you looked at some of Brad Pitt's kind of cameo roles as of late, you kind of know what his character what, what his character is there to do. And so for me, I was kind of in on it from the beginning. So 
You know what I mean? It wasn't surprising to me. So that, that took away from it. If that makes any sense. So there is another movie. I've been, I'm looking it up here, which I think is also another, like, she writes novels about adventure heroes. I have never seen it, but it's called American Dreamer, also from the 80s. I'll watch that. Yeah, well, that, that's why I want yeah. to bring it up while we're talking about this, because I, I know you, you're kind of into those kind of movies. Yeah. I'd actually be interested in seeing this, too. I have no idea if it's any good, but that's Joe Beth Williams and Tom Conti. All right. So maybe we'll we can check that out. Check that one out. All yeah. right. So that's what I've been watching. <laughs> kind of disappointed with Lost City. Uh, I do want to check out X now that you like it, and hopefully it'll be something I like. All right. Uh, so on the so uh, with ransom, I wanted to pair. Oh, yeah. yeah, no, no worries. I wanted I'm to like, pair it uh, with another <laughs> kidnapping movie. I was almost gonna do Taken. I don't know where you fall in Taken. I feel like Taken's so recent that you've probably seen it. Oh yeah. But I've never seen Taken. Oh really? Yeah. So <laughs> I, I was gonna pair it with that, but then I was like, let's. I mean. The, 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 the good and bad news is there's a plethora of kidnapping movies so yeah. uh, to choose from. So for me, I decided to choose another movie about a kidnapping that's a, that came out around the same time. So this one came out a year earlier. And, um, and the movie is called Nick of Time. This one stars Johnny Depp. And it's kind of of the same kind of ilk. So I thought it'd be interesting to see how two different uh, writers and directors kind of tackle the subject of Someone has to do something to save their kid. So that's what I decided to pair with Ransom was Nick of Time. He did not save his bed sheets in the Nick of Time, did he? No, I don't think he did. I don't think he did. No, I I get it now. Get it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Amber Turd. (laughs) (laughs) All right. uh, Okay, that's everything. Ransom and more. Maybe you feel different than us. Maybe you think Ransom is a Stone Cold classic like Kirby does. Leave a comment down below if you're watching us on YouTube. Uh... Please uh, like, subscribe, share, do all that social media stuff. It really does help. I see there's more people subscribing and watching the show. It makes me very happy. Thank you, everyone who's coming on board and watching that. I really do appreciate that. Um, Please shoot us viewer questions, realshame at gmail.com. And we'll see you next week when we find out if Johnny Depp is named Nick or if he does anything in the nick of time. (laughs) We'll see you soon, guys. Bye.